Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to World War II In Depth. In today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing the M1 Garand, and I think that the M1 Garand is an underrated weapon. It's obviously outclassed in a lot of situations by spray weapons when you get up close. When somebody's just going to full auto you with the bar or the M1941, yes, the M1 Garand can feel bad. Yes, it can feel unfun to use. However, the M1 Garand is a surprisingly powerful weapon if you don't mind playing a little conservative, which is why all the gameplay today is going to be from the war mode which is the most conservative mode typically i do it on defense but you'll see some offense as well let's jump into the stats of the bar so you can see why i kind of like this gun it'll deal 60 damage up close decrease to 55 damage at medium range and then 49 damage at very extreme ranges meaning that it will kill in between two and three shots depending on how far away you are from the enemy this is unique in Call of Duty World War II, as only one other assault rifle can kill in two shots, which is the SVT-40. However, this one has far less and more manageable recoil, so you can spam that two-shot kill and drop people very, very effectively. Headshot multiplier is 1.1x, which means it only helps at long range. At really extreme ranges, this can help you get one less shot to kill, but generally speaking, it doesn't make much difference. Aim for body only when you get the opportunity. You might be asking me, hey Drifter, what's the two-shot kill range? Well, the two-shot kill range is 50 meters, which is extremely long, and if you run advanced rifling on this weapon, that goes up to 100 meters. I can't think of an engagement in any map that's greater than 100 meters. This is the M1 Garand with a 4X scope on it and with advanced rifling, and you can see that all the way across Gustav Cannon, I can still just two-shot people. I am yet to find a distance in any map longer than that, so it's basically a two-shot kill monster, and you can just pop people two shots top top and drop really long ranges with advanced rifling rate of fire unfortunately is nothing to be really proud of it shoots at 324 rounds per minute if you run rapid fire on it it's going to go up to around 350 including frame rounding and unfortunately it's semi-automatic so you have to rely on your trigger finger to pull at this speed however it's kind of an awkward speed in that most of us can pull that trigger finger right around four or five hundred rpm so if you spam it at your full-on natural Natural speed you'll actually oversample and shoot slower this is one you're gonna to have to practice with to get a feel for exactly how long to shoot you get a feel for the optimal rate of fire because you don't want to be oversampling don't spam your trigger just take your time to learn the weapon to shoot at that optimal speed because the M1 Garand has the best theoretical time to kill in the entire game minus the one-shot weapons of course if you hit two shots in a row at maximum RPM. If you're firing right about that maximum rate of fire and you hit somebody twice, they're gonna die incredibly fast, faster than the bar, faster than the PPSH, faster than the WAF. You're just gonna two shot drop people and it's gonna be very spooky and they're just gonna grump about it and it's like blah, 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 they're cheating, they're hacking. No, it's a skill and it takes a long time to master. However, practical time to kill will vary depending on your skill, but is generally slower than average in the game. If you miss shots, if you oversample, if you're not very accurate, if you have to reload, if your enemy's behind cover, if anything goes wrong to disrupt your ideal two-shot scenario, time to kill plummets into the very slow land and you do not want to be there. Iron sights on the M1 Garand aren't half bad, but the vertical recoil can make the gun hard to use at range. The actual iron sights themselves are pretty clear, very easy for acquiring targets. However, the recoil is mostly vertical and it kicks the gun barrel up into your field of view. So if you get shot, if you take some flinch, if the enemy is long range, it can kind of obscure what you're looking at and cover up your targets, which can be very, very annoying. So for the M1 Garand, you're gonna wanna run some kind of optics, any kind of optics. I initially, when I started playing this was very much so into the reflex site and then I tried the smaller site it wasn't quite as great and I found that the ACOG is quite good for long ranges if you don't mind camping if you don't mind playing kind of like a sniper doing some setup the ACOG is surprisingly nice on this gun but I think the majority of you are really going to gravitate toward the reflex site it's nice it's open it's clear it's easy to use and that's the one that I generally prefer most of the time as well hip fire spread is normal for rifles in Call of Duty World War II this one thankfully did not get nerfed however given the fact that it's semi-auto low rate of fire not many rounds in the magazine you really don't want to be hip firing people i would strongly recommend against it and the recoil which we spoke of earlier is moderate to high but mostly vertical 
It kicks a little bit more than you think. It's not a super accurate weapon in the traditional sense, but the recoil is vertical, it's predictable, you can practice with it, you can master it, and it can be mitigated just by slowing down your shots. But the more you slow down your shots to compensate for the recoil, the worse your time to kill gets. So there's a give take there. And one of the good things about it, the M1 Garand has no idle sway at all, so it's great for snap aiming to targets. You can do that quite well. If it had idle sway, I would probably go crazy. The number one core weakness to this gun other than the slow rate of fire in semi-auto is magazine size. It's an assault rifle that only has an eight round magazine, which means you can kill four people at most, even if you have 100% accuracy. Most of the time, most players are gonna spam really fast and absolutely have to reload after killing every single player, sometimes two. If you run extended mags on it, you go up to a colossal 12 rounds, woohoo. Same magazine issues, same ammo spending issues. You need to be very conservative with your shots with this weapon and not waste them. Reload time on the M1 Garand is not bad at 1.1 seconds, and unlike the historical gun, and unlike it is in other Call of Duty games, yes, you can reload it when the chamber is empty. You don't have to completely empty all your rounds to reload it or to reload it quicker. Just a 1.1 second reload. Normally, I would say that's great, but considering how often you're going to be reloading it, you're going to get really tired of reloading this weapon, so it's going to feel a lot worse than it truly is. For this weapon, I feel that extended mags is an absolutely essential attachment. It grants you four more rounds, which is two more chances to kill people. I almost said four. I was thinking about hardcore because they can just one-shot people infinitely in hardcore. Hustle can also be very useful. I think that Prime does better, but Hustle can be great for that super fast reload. It can minimize your downtime with the M1 Garand, which will maximize your lethality. If you're going to run the M1 Garand, I think that the infantry division is a must for this weapon. This gun is really weak up close. You can't hip fire people. You're going to have a lot of flinch if people are shooting you in the face. It's going to be difficult to deal with people up close, so having infantry division and having bayonet is fantastic. A lot of people will notice that you're running the M1 Garand, and they will foolishly try to bum rush you. They're going to try to get in your face with shotguns. They're going to try to hose you with the PPSH. They're going to come in just full-on blazing with the WAF. However, if you position yourself carefully, especially around corners, you can do the sprint charge around corner and just bayonet them right in the heart and put them to bed. It's extremely useful and I, I just wouldn't use any other division with the M1. Foregrip is nice as well. Foregrip isn't the greatest benefit in Call of Duty World War II. I'm still kind of playing with that, trying to get exact numbers. It's a small benefit, but it is a benefit, especially on a weapon where missing a shot is so critical. And more for anything, it just helps me with gun shake. My recommended setup for public matches is as follows. Primed, absolutely essential to minimize flinch. Once you start flinching with the M1 Garand, you're gonna die, and you just pretty much have to have Primed. M1 Garand is also a gun that requires a lot of attachments to be good, so with Primed, you get more attachments. I run quick draw on it so that since I'm not sprinting around and posted up, I can snap aim people very, very quickly when I need to. Optics, extended mags, and advanced rifling so that I just don't ever have to worry about three-shotting people. This is a somewhat suboptimal build. If you really wanted to go try hard, if you really wanted to tweak this build, you would run primed. You'd still want to run primed, but instead of quick draw, you would want something like FMJ so you can punch through walls. You still want optics. You would probably take foregrip and then you would probably not take advanced rifling. Instead, you would take something like rapid fire or something like that to help with your raw time to kill. That's more of a high skill setup. This is the one that I recommend. This is the one that works for me. Lookout is also an excellent basic training to use on the M1 Garand, allowing you to see people at longer ranges, having those red names pop up and being very visible is very, very useful. That is a godsend, especially if you're gonna be playing war modes, which is where I recommend it because that's the one you can camp on or play conservatively, as we'll say. Lookout is fantastic. It also lets you see people through smoke. So if you do get matched up against a team that knows how to play war mode and how to use the smoke grenades, you can pick them off through the smoke. And finally, my recommended setup for competitive is whatever you need to anchor with. This gun has the nice, like, theory in competitive that you could two-shot people, that you could murder them. However, it's not super versatile. However, I could see some people using it to very hard anchor hardpoint spawns in some of the big maps. So whatever you feel that will help you anchor with the M1 Garand, that's what I'd recommend for competitive. Guys, that is all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And the next episode should either be on the primed perk, or oh, my bad, prime basic training, or the STG44. Drifter out.
If you want all the stats for World War II weapons in your pocket to go, then look no further than the World War II Ultimate Utility by Brass Monkey Apps. 